Hi and welcome to another video from James Dobb Stories. If you're enjoying the content on my channel, then check out my Patreon page for amazing audiobooks, including Harry Potter, David Walliams, The Hunger Games, and much, much more. You're welcome and thank you. Now, let's get into today's video. Hi and welcome to another story, and today we have part one of Lily Alone by Jacqueline Wilson, starting from the very beginning, chapter one. It was my fault. We were all sitting squashed up on the sofa on Friday night watching Coronation Street, the second episode of the evening. Well, none of us were actually watching. Pixie was squatting on the arm of the sofa, rubbing tomato sauce around her mouth, telling us over and over again that she was wearing lipstick like mummy. My littlest sister, Pixie, could win the world record for repetition. She's three and talks all the time, though most of what she says is nonsense. My other sister, Bliss, is six, but she hardly talks at all. She was lying on her back on the sofa, twiddling her long pale hair and snuffling into her old teddy. She had her favourite fairy tale book tucked beside her. Her twin brother, Baxter, was driving a matchbox up and down her legs, pretending it was a car, making silly whining racing noises. I was flipping through the pages of one of Mum's magazines, wondering what it would be like to be rich and famous and trying to choose which lady I wanted to be. It was hard taking them seriously because they all had bushy moustaches. Baxter had clearly been busy with his blue biro at some earlier stage. Mum was the only one of us sitting up properly and watching the screen, but I knew she wasn't following all the Corrie people. She didn't change position when the adverts came on. She just sat staring, her chin on her hand, her eyes big and blank. Mum? I reached out and gave her a little poke. Mum, are you okay? Yeah. You don't look okay. Oh, shut up, Lily, Mum said wearily. She was always acting tired now, since Paul died. She was too tired to get up in the mornings, too tired to go to bed at night. She was too tired to go to work, and then, when she lost her job in the canteen, she was too tired to get another one. She just stayed at home smoking and staring into space. I made her go to the doctor because I was dead worried about her. He gave her tablets for depression. He said it was natural to grieve for a while when you'd lost your husband. I didn't get that. Mum didn't like Paul much when he was around. None of us liked him, not even Pixie, and he was her father. He'd either be yelling and slapping at us, even Mum. Or he'd be zoned out on the sofa looking stupid in his vest and pants and socks. We weren't allowed to sit on our own sofa when Paul was around. Mum muttered that he was a waste of space and a big mistake. She said she'd always had lousy taste when it came to men. That's what I couldn't understand. Whenever she didn't have a man, she turned into zombie woman, acting like it was the end of the world. I couldn't bear to see her like that, especially looking so ordinary in her old baggy t-shirt and tracky bottoms. Mum could look fantastic when she wanted, better than any of the ladies in the magazines. When she got all dressed up to go out, she could make my heart stop. She looked so gorgeous. That's why I said it. Mum, why don't you go out? What? Go on, go down the Fox. See some of your old mates. The Fox and Hounds is the pub over the road from our estate. It's got a garden, so in summertime, the kids and I used to hang out there with Mum and Paul. And before that, with Mikey, Baxter and Bliss's father. Mum says she used to take me there when it was just the two of us. She'd wheel me there in my buggy and I'd sit crunching crisps. Happy as Larry. I was always an easy baby, Mum said. She didn't half get a shock when she fell for Baxter and Bliss. And Pixie's a nightmare. She won't sit in her buggy for two minutes at a time. She arches her back and screams when you try to get her in it. Don't be daft, Lily. I can't go down the fox. Not with you lot. I'm not being daft. I mean, go on your own. The kids will be all right. I'll babysit. Mum looked at me, chewing one of her fingernails. Really? Yeah, yeah, of course. Mum went on chewing, her hair in her eyes. I could tell she was considering. She'd left me in charge of the kids heaps of times, when she had to go to the post office or the newsagent or the off-licence, though it was my job to run down to the chippy. I shouldn't leave you lot on your own in the evening, Mum said. You used to. When you first started going out with Paul, I reminded her. Yeah, but I shouldn't have. And that was when you were all tucked up in bed and asleep. I'll put the kids to bed. I'll do it half... I do it half the time anyway. I know, you're a good kid. Mum reached out past Baxter and Bliss and stroked my cheek with her finger. I forget you are a little kid sometimes. I'm not little, I'm eleven, and I'm old for my age. Yeah, you act like a little old woman a lot of the time. I love you, Lily. I love you too, Mum. Go on, go. Get dressed up. I'll be fine. Well, maybe just for one drink, to cheer myself up a bit. Go on, then. Mum smiled looking just like Pixie when you buy her an ice cream, and rushed off to her bedroom. Pixie toddled after her. She loved watching Mum when Mum dressed up. So Mum's going out then, said Baxter, driving his car across my face. Leave it out, I say, swatting at him, and give me that matchbox. You know it's dangerous to play with matches. 
I'm not playing with the matches. I'm playing with a box. So can we stay up, yeah? We'll watch a DVD, right? Not a scary one, said Bliss, hunching up into a little ball. Not a scary one, I promised, though that was going to be a challenge. Bliss can't even watch up without shaking. I think it's the dogs. Her dad, Mikey, had an Alsatian, Rex. It wasn't a truly scary dog like a Rottweiler or a pit bull, but it would... It could be a little savage at times, even when it was a puppy. It looked all cuddly and cute, so Bliss treated it like one of her teddies and once tried to dress it up. Rexy got fed up and bit her. It was only a little nip, but it made her hand bleed. She was always terrified of dogs after that. You're no fun, Bliss. I want to watch a really, really, really scary DVD, said Baxter. Let's watch a vampire film, and then we can all turn into vampires and bite. He pretended to take a chunk out of Bliss's neck. She screamed as if she was literally pouring blood. What's up? said Mum, putting her head around the door. She'd got one eye shadowed and outlined, but hadn't done the other one yet, so she looked lopsided. They don't want me to go, do they? They're fine, Mum. They're just being silly. Shut up, you two, I said, bashing at Baxter and Bliss with a cushion. You want Mum to go out and have a lovely time, don't you? Don't you, I said, digging at them with my feet. Yes, Lily, said Bliss, her hands around her neck, staunching her imaginary wound. I dug Baxter harder this time and put my hand on his matchbox car. Yes, go out, Mum, he said, snatching his car back. Well, then I will, said Mum. You can keep them in better order than I can, Lily. You'll make a lovely little Mum one day. No, I won't. I'm not ever going to be a mother. I'm not going to live with my, any man and have a load of kids yelling around me all the time. I can't stick men, apart from Mr Abbott, my teacher. I wouldn't mind marrying Mr Abbott, but Mum says he's not the marrying kind. If I can't have Mr Abbott, I won't have anybody. I'll make lots and lots of money and live in a lovely big house all by myself. No one will throw their toys on the floor or spill juice on the carpet or bash the television so it goes on the blink. My house will stay as pristine as a palace. It will get featured in all the magazines and little girls will cut out photos of it and stick them in their scrapbooks because my house will be so beautiful. I'll design it myself. That's how I'll make all my money. I'll be a famous interior designer with my own television programme. I went to find some paper to draw on, deciding to make a start straight away. Baxter and Bliss wanted to draw too, but there was only one clean page left in the old drawing pad. It's my drawing pad, said Bliss, which was strictly true. It was one of her presents last Christmas, along with some fat wax crayons. Yeah, and you can crayon on the cardboard back. That's the best bit, I lied. What about me, said Baxter, trying to snatch the drawing pad for himself. I thought you liked drawing in magazines, I said. Why don't you give all the ladies beards as well as moustaches? So Baxter scribbled determinedly giving every celebrity a bushy beard, adding a distressing amount of body hair while he was at it. Bliss crayoned a big pink cube with little wires sticking out, and then added four little wiry cubes. She said it was our family portrait, but we had to take her word for it. I sat up cross-legged, resting my precious piece of paper lengthwise on a tray, and started designing my dream house. I knew it sliced open, so I could show all the rooms inside. I didn't just stick at living room and kitchen and bedrooms. I had a studio with a proper artist's easel and a potter's wheel, a music room with a piano and a drum kit, a library stuffed to the ceiling with books, a conservatory with butterflies flying about the flowers, and a swimming pool the entire length of the basement. Pixie stayed watching Mum, which was wonderful. She was usually a royal pain when we drew. She hated it that she wasn't old enough to draw properly herself, so she'd snatch at our pens and crayons and then scribble rubbish all over our pages. She came skipping in at last, going, Look at Mum! Look at Mum! Isn't she pretty? Mum looked lovely. Her long hair piled up with the front bit crimped into little curls. She had matching Cleopatra eyes now and a big shiny scarlet mouth. She wore a tight pink top that showed a bit of her red bra and a little black skirt, black tights and her best red high heels. Pixie and Bliss and I love to shuffle along in Mum's high heels, pretending we're grown-up ladies out on the town. You look totally knockout, Mum, I said, and Baxter whooped in agreement. You really think I look all right? Mum said anxiously. I think I've got a bit baggy and saggy since Pixie was born. You have not. You look fantastic, I said. Mum peered down critically at her chest. Couldn't have to do with a boob job, she said. There's hardly anything there. Stick a couple of oranges on your chest, Mum, said Baxter, cackling with laughter. You shut up, you cheeky little what's it, said Mum. She seemed so different now she'd put on her makeup and fancy clothes. I was pleased my suggestion had perked her up to no end. You go and have a great time, Mum, I said. Well, I'm not even sure if any of the old crowd will be there. I'll maybe just have a couple of drinks and come home. But even if I'm having a right laugh, I promise I'll be back home by midnight. Don't want to turn into a pumpkin, do I? It was Cinderella's coach that turned into a pumpkin, said Bliss. Cinderella's her favourite fairy tale. 
had to read it to her every night from our big fairy story book. She took it all very seriously. Mum kissed Bliss on her pale cheek, gently pinched Baxter's nose, he hates being kissed, and picked Pixie up and twirled her round and round till she squealed. Then Mum gave a quick hug. Thanks, babe, she said, and darted off in her high heels. For a few seconds we were all silent after she'd slammed the front door. The flat seemed suddenly still. Then the Cory theme started up and it sounded weirdly melancholy. Baxter leapt up and started running around the room, yelling at the top of his voice, pretending to be a police car, siren blaring. Stop that row, Baxter, I said. I'm going to catch you and arrest you and beat you up in my cells, said Baxter, driving himself straight at me. No, I'm the boss of a really mean gang of criminals and I'm going to have you wiped out, I said. I grabbed hold of him and wrestled him to the floor. We were only mock fighting, but Bliss started begging us not to hurt each other. Stop it, Baxter. Okay, you win. March me off to the cells in handcuffs, I said, offering him my wrists. It's okay, Bliss. We're just mucking about. Hey, where's Pixie? She'd gone wandering off to Mum's bedroom. I found her sitting in the middle of the bed, rubbing lipstick all over her face. Pixie, you are naughty, I said, though I had to struggle not to laugh because she looked so funny. Not naughty. I want real lipstick like Mum, she said. I want to be a pretty lady. Mum will be mad if she finds out. That's her best lipstick. Here, what do you look like? I picked her up and stood her at the dressing table. Pixie laughed at her war paint. Come on, let's wash it all off. No, no, I like it. Well, you're going to have to wash it off before bedtime. It is your bedtime, Pixie. Come on. Pixie wasn't going anywhere. She jumped up and started careering about the flat, waving her arms like windmills. I chased her round for ages. I'm not tired yet. I'm not tired yet, she gabbled. Look, I'm getting tired running after you. Maybe I'll go to bed now, I said, and I threw myself down on Mum's bed and lay still as stone, my eyes shut. Pixie giggled uncertainly. She ran a few more steps and then stopped. Lily, she said. I didn't move. I heard the little slurpy sound of her putting her thumb in her mouth. She snuffled and sucked for a minute, then. Lily? I sat up and grabbed her and pulled her onto the bed with me for a cuddle. She squealed and wriggled and thumped me with her little fists. You frightened me, you meanie, she said. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, Pixie. I forgot you're so little. Like a little, little baby. Here, let's turn you into a real baby. I pulled Mum's soft blanket off her bed and wrapped it around Pixie and picked her up in my arms. There now, I said, carrying her into the living room. Baxter was sorting through our pile of DVDs, chucking the ones he didn't fancy over his shoulder. Bliss had found my crumpled page of Dreamhouse and was carefully walking her fingers into every room. Look at my new little baby, Baxter and Bliss. Isn't she lovely, I said. Say hello, little baby. Coo -coo 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 -coo, said Pixie, trying hard to play the game and do baby talk. What's she saying? Poo poo, said Baxter, sniggering. The baby's done a big poo poo. I haven't, said Pixie, struggling to get out of her blanket. Poo poo, Baxter repeated maddeningly, holding his nose. Stop teasing her, Baxter, it's mean. And quit chucking those DVDs around. I'll choose, I said, tucking Pixie up on the sofa beside Bliss. There, you'll look after my baby properly, won't you, Bliss? Can she be my baby too, said Bliss. Can I feed her? Want my bottle, said Pixie. She wasn't playing now. She still had a real bottle at night. It didn't have to be full of proper milk. It could be a weak tea or ribena or anything. She just liked lying on her back and sleeping su and sleepily sucking. Okay, okay, I'll fetch you your bottle in just a second. We're all going to watch Peter Pan. That's boring. It's just for babies, said Baxter. No, it isn't. There are pirates in it, remember? The pirates are scary, said Bliss. Not really. And remember, there's little Tinkerbell in Peter Pan. You like fairies and mermaids too. And you like Wendy's house, I said. I still liked all these things myself, babyish or not. And I especially loved the flying part. I would give anything to be able to soar straight up into the sky. I've dreamed about flying, but I can't do it properly, even in my dreams. I just skim the surface of things. I have to move my arms and legs jerkily as if I'm swimming. It's not really flying properly, more mid-air gymnastics. I want to fly up and away effortlessly, like a bird. I suppose what I really need is a good pair of wings. When I was little, I used to feel my back and wonder if my sharp shoulder blades might be wings just starting to grow. I still imagine them sometimes, great white feathers tucked up tight like a fan, neat against my back. I'd pretend I could spread them at any time I wanted and fly away. Sometimes I wouldn't walk straight home from school to our first floor flat. I'd puff my way up to all the steps to the top balcony and stand there, clutching the rusty rail, peering out, pretending I could just let go and soar over the treetops of the huge park. Peter Pan and Wendy and John and Michael flew without benefit of wings, as far as I could remember. I wanted to check out their flying technique, so I was firm with Baxter and Bliss about my choice of DVD. Pixie was, Pixie was a pushover. 
She had inherited Bliss's old Tinkerbell costume and loved wearing it. She ran off to get changed. It took quite a while as she wasn't very good at dressing herself, usually ending up with a leg in a sleeve or arms through the neck hole. The costume was pretty sticky because she'd spell, spilled juice all down it the last time she'd worn it, but she didn't seem to care. I fixed her a fresh bottle to keep her quiet while she was watching, and I filled a big bowl with cornflakes. This is our popcorn, like we're really at the cinema, I said, switching the DVD on. I settled myself in the middle of the sofa with Baxter in the corner on one side of me, where he couldn't torment the girls. I let him hold the cornflake bowl to make him feel special. I settled Bliss and her teddy in the other corner and squeezed Pixie in beside her, cuddling her close. They all fidgeted and argued and spilled cornflakes for the first ten minutes, but then they quietened down and watched properly. It was as if the sofa itself had spread little leathery wings and flown us straight to Neverland. We didn't budge until the cast list started rolling. Again, Pixie begged. Put it on again. Don't be daft. It's way past your bedtime. I looked at the clock. Quick, it's gone closing time at the Fox. Mum will be back in a minute, and if she finds us all up, she'll be really mad. Come on, who can get into bed first? Pixie toddled off to her little cot all by herself. It was much too small for her now, but she screamed if we tried to make her sleep on the mattress with us. She scrambled over the bars and snuggled up, falling asleep as soon as her head hit the pillow. She was still wearing her Tinkerbell costume with lipstick scribble all over her face, but I couldn't be bothered to wash and change her. Baxter was much more of a challenge. Come on, Baxter, get into bed. He squared up to me, hands on his hips. Who's telling me to get into bed? You can't boss me around. You're not my mum, he shouted. He was only clowning around. I always tell him what to do, far more than mum, but he just wanted to be difficult. I had to tip him over and pull his jeans off his waving legs and then stuff him inside his duvet. He immediately got up again. Duvet pulled right over his head. Baxter, lie down. I'm not Baxter, I'm the duvet monster and I'm going to smother you, Baxter growled, staggering about the bedroom. Don't be the monster. I hate that, Bliss said. She seemed the easiest of the lot. She got into her nightie and lay down on her mattress, cuddled up. But long after Baxter was sound asleep, she was still awake, snuffling into a teddy tummy. I reached out and put my arm around her. Bliss, go to sleep, I whispered. I can't. Not till mum comes back. She'll be back any minute, I said. I wasn't sure where she could have got to. It was definitely past closing time at the Fox. She'd said she'd only have a couple of drinks. I hadn't necessarily believed that, but she'd promised to be back before midnight. I lay with my arm around Bliss, my legs twined around Baxter's twitchy little feet, listening. I heard guys yelling and messing about down on the forecourt, and then a series of thumps as they chucked beer cans about. They sounded like young lads. Mum wouldn't be with them. Then I heard a couple having a screaming row and I tensed up, but the woman's voice was too low and hoarse to be Mum's. I listened to them swearing at each other, and then the sound of a blow. Bliss tensed up. Shh, it's all right. They'll go home now, I said. Mum? She'll be back soon. I bet she's gone back to one of her friend's flats for another drink. But don't worry, she'll be fine. Back my midnight? Bliss mumbled. Yes, definitely, I said, though I was pretty sure it was gone midnight already. When Bliss went to sleep at last, I wriggled cautiously off the mattress and padded into the kitchen. I flicked the light on. The clock showed it was ten to one. I shivered, wrapping my arms around myself. She'd promised to be back by midnight. A horrible series of images flickered in my head. I saw Mum screaming in a car, a man hurting her, Mum weeping and bleeding in a gutter, Mum lying horribly still, her eyes open, her face blank. I smacked my forehead, trying to make the images go away. I poured myself a glass of water and sipped it slowly, but I'd started to shiver and the glass clinked uncomfortably against my teeth. Come home, Mum, I whispered. I sat down at the kitchen table and picked at the edge until my nail was sore. My feet were numb with cold, so I got up and walked around and round the table. It was nearly summer. Mum had gone out without a jacket, yet I felt deathly cold. I wanted to go back to bed and warm myself up, but I didn't want to wake Bliss or Baxter. I wished I wasn't the oldest. I wanted to be the littlest, like Pixie, with people telling me what to do. That was the scary thing. I didn't know what to do if Mum didn't ever come back. I smacked my head again, trying hard not to think it. I wondered if I should put on some clothes and go out looking for Mum. But if the kids woke up and I wasn't there either, they'd be terrified. And I was terrified at the thought of setting out around the estate in the middle of the night. It wasn't just the thought of all the drunks and smackheads and bad lads. It was the dark itself. The thought of starting out along the dark balcony and feeling my way down the pitch black stairwell made me shiver even more. I went into the living room and lay on the sofa, my head on Mum's cushion. I could very faintly smell her musky perfume. I nuzzled into the cushion like Bliss with her teddy. The hard edges of the fairy tale book were digging into my chest. I fingered the pages, thinking of all the weird people trapped inside. 
Cinderella with her pink and blue and white ball gowns, folded flat, Snow White crushed inside her glass coffin, the three bears flattened into floor rugs. I remembered when I was little, and there was just mum and me. She read me those stories then, over and over. She showed me the label inside the front cover, to Lily Green, first prize for reading, writing and spelling. I couldn't read myself then, let alone write or spell, but I knew the shape of an L, the dot of an I, the curly tail of a Y. It says Lily, that's my name. Is it my book, Mum? I asked. It was my Nan's book. I loved my Nan, much more than my Mum, your Nan. She used to read me stories from this book when I went to visit her. This is her school prize, see? She was ever so bright, my Nan. I named you after her, Lily. And you're going to be ever so bright too. I wasn't that bright. I couldn't figure out how this Lily could be young enough to go to school and old enough to be a Nan. But I liked the sound of her and I loved her storybook. I wanted to go and visit her, but Mum shook her head sadly and said she was dead. And now my Nan was dead too. She got ill just after the twins were born. So we're all on our odio now, Mum said. We must actually have a set of other Nans, the mothers of our dads, but we'd never met them either. Mum was right. We were on our own. So what would we do if anything happened to Mum? I was the oldest and bravest. What was I doing? We weeping into Mum's cushion. I turned it over, wiped my eyes with the hem of my nightie and burrowed down again. At some stage, I must have gone to sleep. Chapter 2 I woke with a start. I heard scuffling and then footsteps, creeping slowly towards me. I leapt up, fists clenched. Hey, hey, it's me, babe. It's only me. Oh, Mum. I wound my arms around her and hugged her hard. She sat down on the sofa and I climbed onto her lap, as if I was little, like Pixie. What are you doing sleeping on the sofa, Lily? Did Baxter start kicking you? No, no, I just couldn't sleep in with the kids. I was worried. Where were you? You said you'd come back before midnight. Hey, don't go on at me and shush, you'll wake the others. What time is it? I don't know, five maybe? Later or earlier? Whichever. Mum giggled. Are you drunk, Mum? I couldn't see her face properly in the dark, but her voice sounded softer than usual and a little slurred. Drunk with love, said Mum, and she giggled some more. I slid off Mum's lap. Not again, I said. Oh, come on, Lil, don't be like that. Oh, darling, I'm so happy. I can't believe it. I just went down the fox for one drink, like I said, and then I met the man of my dreams. In the fox, I said. The men who drank there were all from our estate, old guys with red faces and beer bellies, and young lads with tattoos who always seemed angry. Not in the fox, sweetheart. I went on clubbing afterwards, didn't I? By yourself? No, I met up with Jenny and Jan. They worked in the canteen too, remember? Well, they were having a girly night out, cheering Jan up because her blokes just walked out on her. They said they were going on to Chancers and asked me to go along too. Didn't really want to, truly. Haven't been to Chancers for donkey's years and it's already young kids there. I was all set to come home, I swear I was, but Jenny was very persuasive and I felt I couldn't let them down under the circumstances, so, so I went. I so nearly didn't and then I'd have never met Gordon. Gordon? I tried the name out. He sounds posh. Well, he is, kind of. He talks posh anyway, but he tried not to. He's so sweet. And you should just see him, Lily. He's drop-dead gorgeous, I swear he is. Like, I said, unimpressed. I don't know what my own dad looked like, but the twins' dad, Mikey, was this big, fat, ugly guy, and Pixie's dad, Paul, was thin and pinched and weedy, yet Mum had fought them drop-dead gorgeous in their time. He's like a film star, truly. The moment I saw him, my heart practically stopped. Think blonde hair, blue eyes, tall, with a really washboard stomach, and so tanned. Well, he would be tanned. He lives in Spain. He's Spanish. No, no, he's just, he's just hanging out there for a bit, helping out in his uncle's nightclub. He's having a, and what do they call it when posh kids muck around for a year before going off to uni? A gap year, mum. He's a kid. How old is he, 18? He's 19, and he certainly doesn't act like a kid, I promise you. Mum? There's not that much age difference. Seven years, anyway. I didn't tell him how old I am. Did you tell him you've, you've got four kids? Well, I didn't want to overwhelm him with information, not straight away. Like, I will tell him, obviously. So you're seeing him again? You bet, tonight. We're going to the palace up in town. He's doing a, a recce of all the big clubs because this uncle of his wants to expand his own clubs in Spain. So, is he coming here? No. Do you think I'm mad? I don't want him seeing this dump. It might put him right off. I'm meeting up up in town, okay? And you think he'll actually turn up? Hey, what sort of remark is that? Yes, he'll be there. We had the greatest time ever. Lily, I'm not going into details, but believe me, it was great. It was like all the love songs, all the romantic films. We just looked into each other's eyes, and it was like we were on a roller coaster up to heaven. 
Oh, Mum, you haven't half got it bad, I said, yawning. You wait till you grow up, Lily. You'll know what it's like then. I don't ever want to grow up. I'll be like that boy, Peter Pan. I'll stray, stay young forever, and I'll fly out of the window, up in the air, all the way to Neverland. What are you on about, you daft banana? Come on, let's get to bed. You come in with me, babe. So I went and cuddled up in Mum's bed. It was so warm and soft and cosy just with Mum. Her sheet smelled of her perfume. There were no squirmy little bodies and sharp elbows and kicking feet. I stretched out luxuriously and fell fast asleep. I didn't wake up till eleven, and that was only because Pixie was bouncing on my head. I tried to slide her under the covers to have a cuddle, but she was too fidgety, and I could hear Baxter thumping and yelling in the kitchen, sounding as if he was throwing saucepans about. Kids! Mum mumbled, putting her head under the pillow. She didn't get up till lunchtime, and I worried that she might be in a bad mood. It sounded as if she'd been drinking an awful lot last night, but when she got up at last, she gave us all a kiss, even Baxter, and then she had a bath, put on her jeans and t-shirt and flip-flops, and said, Come on, kids, let's go down the shops. We hadn't been out to the proper shops for months. Mum would go to Lidl and Londis every few days, but that was her limit. But now she got us all rounded up, wiped a damp flannel over Baxter and Bliss, gave Pixie a harder scrub, discovering she had lipstick and tomato sauce even in her ears, and then we set off with the bus. I wheeled Pixie in her buggy while Mum held Bliss's hand. Baxter won't ever hold on to anyone. He charged ahead of us and then circled back, leaping about crazily. You behave now, or I'll tell your dad, said Mum. Mikey's the only one Baxter will listen to. Baxter insists on having his hair cut really short, just like Mikey, and he tries to walk like him too, swaggering along with his hands stuck in his pockets. Baxter swears like Mikey too. He swore now at Mum, and she gave him a push, told him to button his lip or she'd take him home right that minute. Baxter hunched up and looked sulky, but then the bus came, and there was no one sitting on the top, up the front, so... He could charge up there with bliss and play at driving the bus. Mum and Pixie and I sat behind. Mum counted out just how much money she'd got. I looked in her wa wallet worriedly. You haven't forgotten I need a tenner for my gallery trip, Mum. Everyone else is paid now. For God's sake, that's school. They're always on at me for money, said Mum. What are they doing? Forever taking you kids on these trips to places? Why don't they keep you in the classroom and learn you stuff? You don't want to waste your time and my money going to some gloomy old gallery, do you? I swallowed. Mr. Abbott was taking all our classes on the school trip. And so I so loved Mr. Abbott. He wasn't shouty or sarcastic like the other teachers. He didn't ever tell me off because my socks were dirty or my hair needed brushing. He didn't act like he thought I was thick. He treated me like a real person, asking me questions and acting like he really wanted to know the answers. I especially wanted to go to the gallery with him because he said I'd love the paintings. I really liked doing my own paintings at school. I'd painted an angel with huge wings, all different colours of the rainbow, and Mr. Abbott liked it so much, he pinned it up on the wall. It's treat money for the kids, said Mum. I sighed. Okay, okay. And you're included too, darling. In fact, you can have more than your fair share because you've been such a good kid. What would you like, babe? New earrings? Hair slides? Bracelet? Me. I want earrings, Pixie said. Me too, Bliss whispered. What about you, son? You after earrings too, said Mum, leaning over and ruffling Baxter's stubby crew cut. Long dangly earrings with sparkly bits. Leave it out, Mum, said Baxter, swatting at her. I'm driving the bus. Whoops, now you've made me run over two old ladies. Never mind, they're just boring. I'll just get those young ones too. Squish, squish, squeal. My son, the homicidal maniac, said Mum. Your son, said a fat bloke across the aisle from us. They're not all your kids, are they? I thought you were their big sister. No, I'm their mum, said Mum. Go on, you don't look old enough. I was a child bride, said Mum, smiling. She was only 15 when she had me. When I was little, we got mistaken for sisters all the time. Sometimes we even played we were sisters. I liked it best when I acted the big sister and Mum was the little one and had to do what I said. We used to play all these lovely games together until Mum lumbered herself with Mikey and the twins. He cleared off and Mum said good riddance. But then she got off with druggy Paul and started Pixie. She is hopeless with men, my Mum. She was even tossing her hair about and acting all smiley-smiley with this silly fat man on the bus. "'Where are you off to, then?' he asked. "'The shops! The shops!' said Pixie. "'And McDonald's,' said Baxter. "'I'm going to drive the bus right up to the entrance. "'No, I'm going to drive it into McDonald's, right up to the counter. "'Cheers, mate. Then I can buy myself a Big Mac, too,' said the fat man. "'Then you drive round to my place, and you kids can all play in my nice garden "'while your mum and I have a little cosy get-together indoors. "'No, don't go, mum.' Bliss, Bliss whispered, taking him seriously. Us, cosy together, said Mum laughing, as if, mister. 
Why not, eh? he said. Your old fella still around, is that it? I've got myself a new fella, said Mum. She breathed in deeply, her eyes sparkling. A lovely new fella. So sorry, mate, I'm taken. Then he's a lucky fella, said the fat man, which was quite nice of him. He wasn't the only guy looking at Mum on the bus. She looked so different today. Since Paul died, she mostly just scraped her hair back in a limp ponytail and didn't bother with makeup and wore washed out old t-shirts and tracky bottoms. No one looked at her twice. But now with her hair curled and her makeup and her tight top and good jeans, she looked wonderful. My heart thumped with pride when I looked at her. It was a struggle getting us all downstairs when we got to the shopping centre. Baxter wanted to stay driving the bus till the last possible second. I had to prise his hands off the rail. Bliss threw a wobbly, going downstairs, clutching me tight, scared she was going to fall. Pixie wriggled so much in Mum's arms, she very nearly did fall. Then we got the buggy caught up with some old lady's shopping trolley, and this young lad leapt up and helped Mum. It was as if she had put a spell on every man in the town. Come on, kiddies, shopping, 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 said Mum, running along, even though she was wearing high heels. Pixie squealing with delight in her racing buggy. We went to the flower field shopping centre first because Pixie loved the singing, dancing teddy bears in the main entrance hallway. Baxter loved them too. He lumbered about growling, pretending he was a bear. Poor silly Bliss was still a bit frightened of the giant bears, nuzzled her head against Mum, not looking. They're lovely bears, just like the three bears in our fairy story book, I said, trying to encourage her. They're not lovely. They eat you all up, said Bliss inst ind indistinctly, because she was sucking her fingers. You're getting your fairy stories mixed up. That was the wolf in Little Red Riding Hood, I said. I'm a bear wolf and I'm going to eat you up, Bliss, Matt Baxter growled, waving his arms around and thrusting his face against hers. Bliss squealed and Mum shook both of them. Stop being so daft, you two. Pixie's got far more sense and she's half your age. Stop messing about or you won't get a treat. Do you understand? But she wasn't really cross at all. She was loving the bears too, singing along to all the silly songs and doing little dance steps around the buggy. We watched the whole bear routine three times and then went off shopping. We spent way more than ten pounds, but I didn't comment. But I couldn't keep my lip buttoned when Mum flashed a new credit card. She said her friend Jenny had sold it to her. I felt sick as soon as I saw it. Mum wasn't supposed to have any credit cards at all. She got into a lot of debt when she first met Paul. She tried to buy stuff using a stolen credit card. She'd ended up in a magistrate's court. I was so scared then in case they sent Mum to prison, but she played dumb and they let her off with a fine. Thank goodness. I was sure they wouldn't let her off again if she tried anything dodgy. Mum, I hissed, as she flashed her card in Claire's, buying bangles and a sparkly hair slide for Bliss, and a little pink pan bag and a lipstick set for Pixie. Stop fussing, Lily, Mum said firmly. But you're not meant to. Shut up, Mum said. She raised her eyebrows at the shop assistant. Kids, she's just sulking because I won't let her have the necklace she wants. This was so mean I nearly cried. I just stood there, red-faced, trembling that the credit card would be rejected. But amazingly, Mum knew the right pin number and the trans transaction went through. Baxter was barging about the shop, pointing at everything, going, yuck, too pink, yuck, too girly, over and over again. When we got outside the shop, Mum prodded him in the stomach and went, yuck, nasty, smelly, bad boy. And then she looked at me. Don't give me that look. I could knock your block off making all that fuss in there. You're acting like I'd nicked that card. Well, didn't you? I told you I got it off Jenny. And where did she get it from? Just stop it, Lily. Who do you think you are? Someone from the bill? Okay, don't, don't feel you have to accept a present off my dodgy card. I don't want one, thanks, I said, and I marched off further up the mall. I felt tears pricking my eyelids and blinked furiously. I wasn't a crybaby. I certainly wasn't going to start blubbing in public. I forced myself to stride out, swinging my arms as if I didn't have a care in the world. I couldn't hear the clatter of the buggy or the chatter of the kids. Weren't they following me? My heart started banging in my chest. No, maybe I really didn't care. I was really cheesed off with mum and fed up with my brother and sisters. I was better off on my own. I am Lily and I walk alone, I muttered. I stepped onto the escalator to the next floor. I looked down as I rose upwards. I am Lily and I fly alone, I said, spreading my arms. I imagined stepping off the escalator, swooping out into the atrium, circling round and round in the glass roof, while all the crowds of shoppers pointed and marvelled down below. My arms rose of their own accord and I leaned sideways over the moving handrail. Lily, what the hell are you doing? Watch out, you'll topple over. Mum was yelling up at me, dragging Pixie in the buggy onto the escalator and yanking at Baxter and Bliss. I waited at the top for them, acting nonchalant. You mad girl, what were you playing at? Mum said, giving me a good shake. 
Then she hugged me hard. I thought you were trying to top yourself. Oh, Mum, don't be crazy. I was just playing I could fly. Fly? You're the crazy one. Stop playing silly flying beggars. But later, as we wandered around the toy shop, Mum seized a little sparkly pair of fairy wings. Here you are, Lily. This is what you need, she said, snorting with laughter. Oh, ha ha, I said, flicking the toy wings contemptuously. Though, if I'd been as little as Pixie or even Bliss, I'd have clamoured for them. What do you want for a present, babe? Seriously, said Mum, as she bought back Baxter a toy forklift truck. Nothing. Oh, come on. Stop sulking, said Mum. Look at the face on you. Hey, cheer up. Coochie, coochie, coo. She tickled me under the chin, as if I was a baby. Leave it out, Mum. Stop it. I doubled up, spluttering. I'm hopelessly ticklish, and it's horrible as a disadvantage. You find yourself shrieking with laughter, even when you're furious. That's my girl, Mum said, digging her thumb and finger in my cheeks. My little Miss Smiley's come back. Come on, pet. I'm in the mood for treating you. What do you want? Well, can I have a big drawing pad just for me? Of course you can, silly. Mum didn't get any old drawing pad with rough paper from one of the pound shops. She took us to a special art shop, bought me a giant pad of smooth white cartridge paper and a new big set of felt-tip pens, all different subtle shades, so I could draw real-looking people, not girls with bright red skin and canary yellow hair. She spent more than the tenner I wanted for the school trip, but she was having such fun it seemed mean to point this out. She bought us all sweets and chocolates too, and a couple of celebrity mags for herself and comics for the kids. She wanted to buy me a magazine too, so I chose my gorgeous home so I could get ideas for my own gorgeous home in the future. You want this one, said Mum, wrinkling her nose. You're the weirdest kid ever, Lily. Look, it's twice the price of all the others, but she bought it all the same. Now it's my turn for treats, said Mum, and she pushed the buggy into a big fashion store. I got really worried then. Each time she used that credit card, I was scared it would be refused. And even when it was genuine, I knew Mum would never have enough money to pay the bill at the end of the month. Mind the kids while I just try this top and skirt on, Lily? Oh, and this dress. Do you think I can just about wriggle into it? What is it? You've got that face on again. Mum, it's nearly 200 pounds. Yeah, well, why should I always have to make do with cheap rubbish from down the market? I'm going up to town tonight. You know I am. I want to look the part. But how will you ever pay it off? You were born middle-aged, you. You've got to have a bit of fun while you can. Live for the moment. Lily, that's my motto. motto. Snatch a bit of happiness when you get the chance. Mum tried the clothes on. The top was a bit too low. Showed a lot of Mum's bony chest. Never mind. I can get one of those push-up bras. That'll do the trick. The skirt's okay, isn't it, Lily? I thought the skirt was too tight and too short, but it wasn't very expensive, so I said it looked great. I hoped Mum would stick with the top and the skirt, but she tried the dress on too. It really did look lovely. It was pearly grey, very silky and slinky. Oh, look, it's dead classy, isn't it? Oh, wait till Gordon sees me in this. He'll love it. I know he will. Gordon, 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 said Pixie, chuckling at the funny name. Who's Gordon? asked Bliss. My new boyfriend, Mum said proudly. I'm your boyfriend, Mum, said Baxter. Yeah, I'm going to take you out dancing in that pretty dress. It is pretty, isn't it, darling? You think I should buy it, don't you? Yes, of course, Mum. I sighed. It was hopeless. The kids were just egging her on because they didn't understand. I was starting to get really worried. It wasn't just the credit card. Mum was getting so worked up about meeting Gordon. I kept wondering if he would even turn up. I'd watched enough romances in the soaps on telly. Young men sometimes fell for older women, but their relationships were never long term. Posh people sometimes hooked up with poor people, but generally it was for a one night stand. Gordon was young and posh. Mum was older and poor, and she had four children. Perhaps that was why she needed to buy the slinky dress with the skirt and top as a backup outfit. She bought them all and kept poking her hand into the carrier bag to stroke them lo lovingly. She took us to McDonald's for lunch, buying us all burgers and French fries, but she just nibbled a few chips herself. I'm too excited to eat, she said. Besides, I need to keep my tummy as flat as possible. That new dress doesn't half cling. Mum, you've got to eat. I'll probably be having a meal with Gordon, somewhere fancy with waiters and soft lights and maybe a violin playing. You're making it all up. Well, why can't I pretend a bit? You do all the time, Lily. Yes, but you're the grown-up and you're making it up too much. Mum bent her head close to mine. Don't spoil it for me, she whispered. I just don't want you to get hurt, I said. Is Mum going to get hurt? Bliss asked anxiously. No, of course I'm not, pet. I'm going to go out and have the night of my life, said Mum. With Gordon, said Pixie, sucking on a chip. Is he going to be our new dad? Bliss asked. No, love, said Mum, laughing. I breathed a sigh of relief. 
At least she wasn't crazy enough to believe that. We went home on the bus, and Mum spent hours in the bathroom, soaking herself, slapping on a mud-packed facial, tweaking her eyebrows. Baxter played about, driving his forklift truck along the balconies, while Bliss and Pixie dressed up in their new finery and played a game of grown-up ladies. I sat at the kitchen table with my new drawing pad and felt tips and my magazine. I had peace. I had privacy. Everything I always longed for. But somehow I couldn't use my precious time properly. I flicked through the magazine quickly, noting a velvet sofa here, a painted table there, but not really taking it all in. I started drawing an ideal living room on the first page of my pad, but I drew the sofa far too small, shrunk to the size of a shoe on my vast white carpet. I couldn't get the legs on my table right, so it lurched sideways, its bowl of oranges and apples about to spill. I tore the page out, crumpled it up and threw it across the room. Temper, temper, said Mum, padding into the kitchen in bare feet. She was wearing her old faded pink dressing gown, but the rest of her was brightly coloured. She put a, a rinse in her hair to bring out the gold. She wore amazing makeup, and her finger and toenails were blue. What do you think, said Mum, waving her fingers at me. You look like you're going mouldy at the edges. Thanks a bunch. It's called Blue Moon. It's the new trendy colour. All the models are wearing it. Don't you like it really, Lily? It looks fine, I said. She was looking at me so hopefully. You look fine, Mum. Really lovely. How old do you think I look? Young. Yes, but how young? Fifteen? Are you taking the mickey? Actually, I look a lot better than I did when I was fifteen, with my stomach stuck out to here and my face all over, my, all over spots. God, I looked a sight then. I thought my life was over, and I'd never have any fun, fun ever again. Because of me, I said in a very small voice. But I was wrong, wasn't I? said Mum, putting her arms around me. You're the best thing that ever happened to me, Lily. You're, a, you're not just like a daughter, you and me. We're best mates, right? Yeah, right, I said, hugging her back. I rubbed my cheek against hers. Careful, don't smudge my makeup. Listen, I've been thinking about tonight. I felt a bit bad leaving you last night. I think I'll get a proper babysitter. I thought of asking Jenny or Jan, but maybe they've got plans to go out themselves, seeing as it's Saturday night. How about if I ask old Calf along the balcony to sit with you? Mum, I can't stick old Calf. And she's balmy anyway. She was this old woman who used to used too much black hair dye, and now her hair had mostly fallen out, so her scalp showed through her black wisps. She couldn't see to do her makeup properly anymore, so she had blue smeared all over her eyes, and her postbox red lipstick crept into the creases of her face, giving her a clown's mouth. I might have felt sorry for her, but she was mean and shouted at us kids, and she said bad things about Mum behind her back. Well, yeah, she is uh, losing a bit now. I saw her shuffling off to the shops in her dressing gown and uh, slippers the other day. Okay, they're not calf. I don't want to ask all them foreigners along the balcony. None of them can speak English. And not that Alice Doodah. She's definitely care in the community. So maybe I could call Mikey. He's very overdue to see the twins, isn't he? Mum, please, please, please don't call Mikey. He was much worse than mean old calf or any of the other neighbours. He was big, with bulging muscles and scary teeth, but just like his dog, Rex. Baxter thought he was great and followed him everywhere, but Bliss was so scared of him she twitched whenever he came near her. He didn't hit her. He hadn't ever hit any of us properly, but I'd seen him hit Mum, so I hated him. He didn't like me either. He called me Sly Boots Lil, told me to quit staring at him. Look, it's about time Mikey did his fair share. He is your dad. No, he isn't. Well, stepdad, he was all set to take you on too. I'm, I'm going to give him a ring. See, see if he can help out. Oh, Mum, please don't. I begged, but she wouldn't listen. She dialed him on her mobile. Hey, is that you, Mikey? Is Kate here, babe? What? No, the twins are fine, but they're missing you especially, especially Baxter. Yeah, he really misses his dad. So I was wondering, could you come over tonight? Yeah, I know it's Saturday night. You're going out. Look, mate, I want to go out too. I bet you're just going down the King Edward with your mates. I know you. What? Look, I don't want you to come around some other Saturday. I want you to come around now. I've got this real hot date up in town. This really gorgeous young guy. She was such a fool. As if Mikey would come now, she told him that. But she couldn't stop showing off about Gordon. Then Mikey interrupted her. What? said Mum. And then she said something bad to him and rang off. The cheek of him, she said, breathing hard. Well, to hell with him. What did he say? Never you mind. I'll show him. He thinks that just because he walked out on me, no one else would ever want me. How dare he? Oh, I wish you could see Gordon. He'd be totally gobsmacked, I tell you. I'm glad he's not coming. I can't stick, Mikey. Look, we don't need a babysitter, Mum. We'll be fine. Yes, but I mightn't be back until late. Really late. Like like all night, said Mum. 
That's okay, I said. We were fine last night, weren't we? Yes, you were. You're a good little girl, Lily. I'm grateful to you, darling. You understand, don't you? It's not that I want to leave you on your own, but haven't got any option, have I? And guys like Gordon, <laughs> they don't often come along. You have to grab them when you can. Mum fixed our favourite tea, sausages and baked beans. She changed into her grey dress while we were eating and retouched her makeup. Then she came into the kitchen and gave us a twirl. Do I look okay? she asked. You bet, I said. You look lovely, Mum, said Bliss. Lovely, 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 Pixie said, clapping her hands. Baxter tried to give Mum a wolf whistle, but he couldn't whistle properly because he'd lost his front teeth, so it came out as a funny hissing sound that made us all laugh. Mum gave us all a kiss bye, and she was off. And that is where we will leave part one of Lily Alone by Jacqueline Wilson. I'll be back soon with the next part of this fantastic story and lots more stories and videos coming your way very soon. If you'd like to subscribe or hit a like, that's always appreciated. Thanks for listening, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.